Stand by. Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite hammer-fired pistols. That's going to be the CZ SBL1 Tactical. We're gonna compare that with the Beretta 92X RDO. Now, if you've been with me for any period of time, you may know that the 92 series has not necessarily been my favorite pistol from Beretta, but I can tell you the 92X RDO uh, has been a game changer for me. This is the pistol that it should have always been, and I really, really do like uh, this, this setup, the way they've got going on. Uh, it's completely changed my mind about the 92 series. I love this pistol. So I wanted to compare both of those pistols because that's what I'm using for the majority of my competitions. Now, I am using other pistols to test them out in a couple of competitions to, you know, kind of get me used to shooting a new pistol under stress. But realistically, if I'm going to be competitive, if I'm walking into a two-gun or IDPA match and I want to do as well as I possibly can, it's going to be one of these two pistols. With that being said, let's get into the administrative part of this video real quick. Thank you guys for swinging by the channel. I really do appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, that would be a huge help. Sharing this video with your friends is a great way to support the channel. Obviously, likes and then a comment down below. My question to you is, if you shoot competition, what is your favorite competition pistol? And if you haven't shot a competition, what's holding you back? I really believe that competition shooting is a great way for you to evaluate firearms, regardless if that is uh, something that you're going to carry or use for home defense. What it does is it allows you to get into stress and really kind of work out some of the niches of each one of these pistols, uh, which is why I try to get most of the pistols that I review through a competition so I can... Uh, Give you a little bit more data on it. So let's get into the video and talk about these two pistols because whew, these things have been a lot of fun to shoot and uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to choose one over the other because I really like them both but that's what I'm going to do in this video. It may surprise you who I'm going to end up choosing but realistically let's talk about the four categories that we're going to go over. That's going to be how does it feel in my hand? Uh, what are the sights like? How does the trigger work for me? And then uh, what has been my shooting experience? Now, regardless of which one I choose, uh, this is just my opinions and my experience. So it may not necessarily fit with you guys. And if it doesn't, obviously let me know why you think you would choose one or the other. And that'd be a lot of fun to see too. But at the end of the day, let's get into it. We'll start off with the uh, pistol grip and how it feels in my hand. And the SBL1 Tactical has been one of those pistols that continues to surprise me each and every single time that I pick it up. Because for a steel framed, double stacked 9mm, you'd expect this to really fill out your hand and it doesn't. CZ does a great job with these grip panels to help contour this to your hand very, very well. It has some really nice checkering on the frame at the front and rear of the pistol grip as well. So it allows you to not only have a comfortable grip on this, but also be able to get your non-firing hand in around this pistol and mitigate recoil as well. So I have been a huge fan of the SBL1 Tactical because of that. Contrast that with the Breda 92X, I've never been a fan of the FS uh, style grips that they've had with that pistol, but the 92X has improved that by adding some really nice checkering on the front and rear, very similar to 
that of the CZ, and these grip panels have more aggressive texturing all the way up to the slide, so getting your uh, non-firing hand in around this pistol uh, to help mitigate recoil has been uh, an added bonus, and I really do applaud Beretta for making that change. However, I will say that this does feel my hand a little bit more than what I would like. So it does feel bigger to me uh, and it just doesn't feel as comfortable as the CZ. That doesn't necessarily mean that it won't feel comfortable to you guys, but for me, this one uh, just feels a little bit too much. Uh, and that's why if I had to choose between one or the other, the CZ would be my choice because it feels more comfortable. So there is that. All right, so let's switch up to the sights and starting off with the CZ. Uh, this is kind of one of the areas that I have to ding it a little bit. When it comes to this being a duty style pistol, these sights work great, but for competition, not so much in my opinion. They are a three dot tritium field night sights, which is, which is great. They're steel, that's another great uh, added bonus to it. But at the end of the day, three dot sights don't necessarily work very well for me because it just kind of clutters my my sights, my, my ability to see the target. I've got everything going on. I've got dots in front of me. I've got dots away from me. I've got to line them all up and get them on target and all that jazz. I don't, I don't really don't like that. What I do like is a high vis front sight with a blacked out rear. So all I have to do is find that high vis front sight and get it in the notch in the rear and go. Um, so that is one of the dings that I have with the SBL1 tactical. Now, with that being said, I don't have a problem aligning these sights every single time that I draw this pistol. These sights are exactly where I want them with minimal adjustments as I'm presenting. So targets three, five, seven, ten yards, I can get these sights on target quickly and pull the trigger and I'm going to get a good A zone hit majority of the time. So that is the flip side of the coin when it comes to the SBL1 tactical. Contrast that with the Beretta 92X, and this is set up exactly how I like them. High vis front, blacked out rear, so if I wasn't going to have a red dot on it, then I could run the iron sights, and I would find that uh, these are more in line with what I like. Now, because this is the RDO version of the 92X, I have the ability to add a red dot, so if I have that ability, I'm naturally going to do that. With both of these pistols coming in right around the same cost, somewhere around $700, having the ability to add a red dot to make this pistol even more accurate is an added bonus. So if I had to choose solely on the sights, I would choose the 92X. But there is a downside and I'm gonna leave that for the shooting experience uh, when it comes to this, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. So let's talk about the trigger on this, and uh, moving back to the CZ, uh, the SBL1 trigger is going to be based off of the CZ75B, which has been renowned as being a great trigger. Not only is it used in the 75B, but the PL1 and the SBL1 as well. So this trigger is tried and true, and it is going to be uh, exactly what you would expect a good quality double action, single action trigger to be. So um, in the double action mode, uh, pretty decent, you know, 10-ish pound trigger. So not that big of a deal. Um, and then when you get it into your single action mode, you're gonna have a little bit of take up here and then it breaks right on over. So that is something I really, really do like about it. Reset on this is um, a little longer than what I would expect, but it's consistent. And that's the big thing about this pistol is that the trigger is consistent each and every single time. And that's something I really, really do like about it. The trigger shoe is not something that a lot of people like. For me, I, I do like it. And I'm kind of one of those guys that are going against the grain here, but I really do like this because it contours my trigger finger exceptionally well. Individuals with larger non-dog flutey style hands <laughs> may not like them very much, but I actually do like this trigger shoe uh, where a lot of people don't. 
92X trigger is really, really good as well. And that's one of the areas that uh, Beretta has improved this pistol uh, quite a bit because of the addition of the red dot technology in on this slide. They've had to rearrange some of the internals, which makes the trigger on this a lot better. The double action trigger is going to be a lot heavier. So when doing long shots, where I'm trying to keep the red dot on target and still move my trigger uh, for double action mode, I end up taking a lot longer than I should. Um, that's a training aspect and I understand that and I can overcome that, but the double action trigger is heavier with this. However, on the single action trigger, that's where Beretta has really improved and cleaned up this trigger quite a bit. A little bit more take up on that trigger from the SP-01, but the brake is right there. And I would actually say that the brake is a little bit more crisp than the uh, SP-01, but I prefer the SP-01 because of how consistent it is, um, which may not necessarily equate to what you guys are looking for, but just, just go with me on this. Uh, the CZ seems to be a better trigger for me as it seems, but this is a great, great trigger and I've really enjoyed shooting this in competition. So there is that. All right, so let's talk about the shooting experience and uh, which pistol I'm going to choose over the other, but I just wanna make a disclaimer. Keep in mind, both of these pistols are exceptional and I would have no problem um, doing very well with either one. There's just, one does a little better a little bit better in my opinion. So with that being said, again, both of these are exceptional pistols. They do what they're supposed to do very, very, very well. And uh, they're fairly equally matched. Grip textures are really nice. Triggers are really nice. Um, the sights, um, that's kind of where I teeter back and forth on because this one does exceptionally well when it comes to the accuracy of the barrel, the pistol, the red dot, the grip angle, all of that jazz. This combination does me very, very well. So does this one, even though I have iron sights. The big difference is twofold. Number one is this one has a manual safety that you're going to have to feed every single time that you uh, draw when it comes to a competition style setup. At least the competitions that I have ran, they have required me to have this on safe each and every single time I holster that pistol. So that is something that I have to uh, defeat each and every single time I draw. I'm having to swipe up on that, on that safety lever each and every single time, slowing me down on my draw stroke ever so slightly. But to me, it's noticeable. So that's number one. Whereas the SP-01 Tactical, it does not have a, um, it does not have a safety, it just has a decocker. So when I draw this, I'm going directly into my double action trigger like I would after I defeat the safety on this. So that is number one. Number two is going to be the sights. While this does have a red dot and this combination is extremely accurate, uh, like I have mentioned before, I still have a huge problem finding that red dot each and every single time that I bring this up to draw. Even now, it is not where I want it. I have to kind of move it around. In one of the recent competitions that I shot this, I actually lost the dot transitioning from one set of targets to another in the same iteration and thought that my dot had turned off. So here I am trying to find the dot, yelling at my pistol. Come on, come on. Come on. And when I finally found it, I was able to complete the course of fire and I actually ended up dropping about two or three seconds trying to find that dot while um, I was shooting. So between that, I'm going to have to go with the SBL1 Tactical as my preferred pistol to go with. Now, I get it. This is not the perfect pistol between the two, and I could train myself to get used to that red dot, but as it stands right now, I really don't want to put the time and effort to do that when 
I draw this pistol, my iron sights are lined up exactly where I want it to be. Am I more accurate with the 92X at distance, like 20 to 25 yards? Yeah, I sure am, but that doesn't mean that I can't be uh, accurate with this as I continue to shoot and improve. I can get a lot better with my iron sights, um, especially at the distances I'm shooting. Usually most of them are going to be around 15 yard mark uh, or less. Every once in a while I'll have a stage where I have to do 20 to 25 yards and that's one that I'm just going to have to kind of really push myself to get through. I could do that very easily with this because I've found that the accuracy is exactly what I want it to be each and every single time. However, running into issues where I'm losing that dot transitioning from one target to another uh, just doesn't bode well for me. So I'm going to have to stick with the SPL1 Tactical as my primary go-to. But at the end of the day, they're both excellent guns and the SPL1 Tactical is just barely eking it out over the 92X in my opinion. Those are my thoughts. What do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section down below. Which one would you choose? And if you would have the same problems with losing that dot, how would you go about fixing that problem as well? I would love to hear what you guys have to say. With that being said, we're pretty much done with this video. I sure do appreciate everybody swinging by. I'd hope for you guys to swing on by the Fit and Fire newsletter and sign up for that uh, for some great deals and get in on that giveaway. That would be cool as well. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks again, as always. Freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. We'll catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.